How does a habitual liar secure a spot in a genre where realness is everything? Lil Tecca is an exception to the rule when it comes to how being exposed as a fraud can quite literally end your career. Given that he's openly admitted to lying in songs about topics like girls, guns, and fancy cars. I don't do like multiple girls, you feel me? Like I'd rather just like one. I don't have no straps for nobody. I don't even drive. You'd expect that the hip hop community would give him the same treatment that they gave to rappers like CJ, Takashi69, or even Slim Jesus back in 2015. However, considering that his latest project outsold notable figures such as Quavo and Lil Yachty, Lil Tecca clearly discovered a successful formula that his predecessors were unable to do. It's your boy Luesta, and today we're going to be investigating how Lil Tecca became hip hop's most successful hypocrite. But before we get there, let's take a look at his come up. And as you'll see, he lived a life that was completely different than what he would eventually start to rap about. Born Tyler Justin Anthony Sharp in Queens, New York, Tekka may have been born in one of hip hop's hotspots, but eventually he moved to the comfort of Long Island by the seventh grade. As a result, he didn't make a name for himself rhyming in a cipher or on the street corner like many other New York rappers. Instead, much like other famous cap rap specialist YB and Namir, his first experience as a rapper came over a gaming headset. How'd you get into actually making music? It was on some Xbox shit. We was on like roasting each other and then I was like, I don't want to roast you on Xbox no more, I'm going to roast you on SoundCloud. After that, he started spitting in real life and got himself taken to the principal's office in the process. After that, I um, started dissing people in school and then my guidance counselor found out and then I deleted all the diss tracks. Although he was initially rapping just to poke fun at his friends, making diss tracks helped Tekka understand the power of punchline and also the importance of exaggerating to get a response out of an audience. Nonetheless, Tekka knew that from the very moment he started rapping that he wanted to make a living off it. I just felt like I had to go crazy. Like I felt like I ain't, I, I ain't had no space to leave nothing on the table. Like I had to take that opportunity, for real, for real. Despite the fact that he was barely a teenager, Tekka was laser focused on achieving his goals and just didn't realize how fast he would be ushered onto the world stage. As a young kid, I already knew what I wanted to do. So I was 14 feeling like all the people at the top are 20, whatever. In 10 years, I'm gonna be 24. They're gonna be 30 something out the door. I definitely didn't see it happening the exact way it happened. After steadily building a name for himself in Long Island, everything would change when he dropped a little track by the name of Ransom. In a song where he expressed how he had twin glocks for his ops, this track catapulted Tekka to overnight stardom. However, it was lyrics like these that would also cause him some trouble down the road. But at first, nobody except himself believed that the song would actually become a hit. It was one of my favorite songs when I made it. As soon as I made it, I was telling everyone in the studio, this is, this is the one. But everyone was saying Did It Again was the one that day, I'm saying Ransom. At just 16 years old, Tekka already knew when he had a hit on his hands. And when Ransom dropped, it instantly put him on everyone's radar. After Cole Bennett took a chance on the unsigned artist, the track became the fourth most successful song in the history of the Lyrical Lemonade channel, up there with the likes of Eminem and Juice World. And as of June 2022, it has since garnered over a billion streams on Spotify as well. Even crazier, it peaked at number four on the charts, which took Tekka from being an absolute nobody into a territory that that even rappers who've been doing this for decades can only imagine. No one, including Tekka and his manager, expected it was going to blow up like that or even land him a record deal. A week after we dropped Ransom, I just got a random call like, hello, is this? And I was like, this is Alex from Billboard magazine. I was calling to get information about Little Tekka because we have him charting here with Ransom. I think I found out in the morning and my mom told me. Had there been label interest? For a fact. A bidding war broke out and just a really hectic 48, 72 hours. When the time was right, time. Suddenly, Tekka had the world's attention with his smooth flow and evident talent for melody. The only problem that he had was that as far as lyrical content went, there was nothing authentic about them. As rappers often do when they come out the gate, Lil Tekka insisted that his music was 100% him in an interview with DJ Booth saying, doing me is just how it should be. If it's not like that, then there's something wrong. However, it became clear that Tekka's interpretation of doing him was different from the typical definition in the rap game. Instead of rapping what his real life was like on Long Island, Tekka's attempt at doing him came from emulating the lyrical content of his influences. Chief Keef is like, it made rapping look cool to mm -hmm. me. 
Like, it was like, it was so different. It was like the first of that type of shit. Like, I don't give a fuck, we just doing this shit on the internet. Basically, Tekka was cosplaying as a thug in his bars while living a completely different lifestyle outside of the studio. Soon, this would complicate the discussion about his position in hip hop and whether he even deserved the spot in the first place to the extent that he contemplated quitting before fully establishing himself. Thankfully, that never happened. And soon after, he did an interview on Genius's YouTube channel where Tekka would do something that would alter the entire higher trajectory of his career. However, unlike our videos on CJ and Slim Jesus, this interview seemed to do more good than it did bad. Taking one look at Tekka back then, complete with braces, glasses, and his general energy, it was probably easy to tell that he wasn't doing dirt in the streets, like he said in his lyrics. In fact, even as Ransom took off, this was one of the main criticisms that he faced when the video dropped on Lyrical Lemonade, such as this comment that got 30,000 likes saying, why Tekka looked like an uncomfortable 13 year old who went to a party with his older brother and is scared to ask to leave. Most rappers, Lamborghinis and Grill, Lil Tekka, braces and golf carts. People always have their opinions, but people were first alerted to Tekka lying in a major way when he hopped on Genius to discuss Ransom in June of 2019. Now, most artists appear on Genius to give the deeper meaning behind their lyrics while simultaneously hoping to reach a broader audience. But for Tekka, he literally went on there to reveal that he never even held a firearm, despite all the gun-toting talk on his records. Um, I got two twin Glocks turned into a dancer. I don't have no straps for nobody. I don't got no straps. This small but hilarious clip went viral, leading to the interview becoming one of the most viewed videos on the Genius channel. So when he returned to the platform to discuss his song, Did It Again, he went even further and completely revealed the truth to his audience in a way that's not often seen on Genius. I got a pack, hit him and do it again. Fucking, I'm fucking a friend. I have a girlfriend. I don't have no young ladies. Don't DM me. Okay, airline took one again. Crashed Ferrari, so I hopped in the bands. I don't even drive. I don't even know how to drive. That's dead. Talking about fashion and firearms that he never even touched, Tekka was unsurprisingly trolled for all the capping, with people struggling to believe just how blatant he was about it. As news of Tekka admitting his own lyrics were fake began to circulate, some fans started viewing him as a representation of what's wrong with rap. Hey, don't let that little Tekka shit convince y'all that it's cool to cap in your raps. The world needs more genuine shit. We got enough cap on the charts. Hip hop has just turned into who can cap the most. Lil Tekka was talking about driving foreign cars when he ain't even have a license. But in Tekka's defense, he wasn't just doing this one minute, then backtracking the next to try and save face. Instead, he leaned into it and tried to make his audience feel stupid for being bothered by what he was doing. Having a gun don't make anyone gangster. So rapping about guns don't make you wanna be gangster. You just rapping about guns. Like I rap about fucking bitches and I have a whole girl. I ain't fucking none of these bitches. Period. If you don't like what I'm talking about, go listen to someone else. It's that simple. In another interview, Tekka claimed that he can do the things he's rapping about, he just chooses not to do them, and that he just wants to rap and make the music he likes. Even with his expose on himself, Tekka's 2019 I Love You mixtape was massively successful and landed at number four on the billboards, even with no features, other than Juice World hopping on the remix to Ransom. But as he was experiencing the greatest success of his life at the age of 17, Tekka felt the pressure to the point where he almost almost gave up. He hinted that he might quit just three months after the song's release and a tweet where he wrote, I love y'all. Shit won't be continuing as long as y'all thought. There's like 30 other rappers that sound just like me. Y'all will be good. Suddenly faced with adjusting to fame before he was even 18, as well as being trolled by critics who felt that him living a lie in his music meant that it was invalid, Tekka clearly found out the hard way of what it's like dealing with too much success at such a young age. But when it came to deceiving his audience, he really shouldn't have worried. Because while previous generations would have found that to be offensive, the sales and the support he got online showed that his fans didn't really care. In fact, they found it refreshing. For instance, in a Reddit post discussing how Lil Tekka admitted to capping on every song, some users claimed that this was the main reason they liked Tekka, specifically for how he doesn't give a fuck. This was backed by another comment reading, Tekka is the realest rapper. He straight admits he never shot anyone, and he just says stuff that sounds good on tracks. I don't see how that makes him fake. Could he rap about stuff that he actually does? Yes, but who wants to hear about a 16 year old playing GTA, shooting hoops, and doing homework all day? As Tekka continued to drop music, and featured on tracks from Internet Money, among others, he had been so successful that he chose to reject being on the XXL freshman list in 2020 
because he already outpaced it. Now, you may think that Tekka was being a bit too full of himself here, and that these type of results would either stagnate or drop off eventually. However, if we compare how his music has aged in comparison to his peers like Lil Pump, Smoke Perp, or YBN Namir, you'll see that Tekka is miles ahead of them. Tekka released two albums in 2019, and while they performed similarly and kept his name in the conversation, they didn't have the same impact as his debut project. This could have easily been perceived as a fall off or that he wasn't as good as he once was. Because historically, child stars don't really stick around. Rappers like Lil Pump popped off at 17 and by the end of 2020, he was pretty much already irrelevant. Plus, Tekka had that reputation as a liar hanging over him. But while someone like Lil Pump had fallen off because people got sick of him, him, Tekka did the smart thing and took a step. Along the way, he leveled up his mindset and found out how to turn his weakness into strengths. After his project, We Love You Tekka 2 dropped in August of 2021, the Long Island rapper kept a pretty low profile. Aside from an occasional feature here and there, not much was known about his next move. That is until, almost out of nowhere, he proved that all that time away hadn't been wasted when he dropped the song titled 500 Pounds. This song went pretty hard, gaining nearly 13 million views in just four months. A pretty impressive stat for a non-mainstream rapper. And straight away, his fans were happy to welcome him back. The first track to drop from his new project, Tech, the press run for the album stressed that while other rappers from his class stayed static or refused to evolve, he actively took time to hone in on his skill set. When you practice and care about your craft, you get better over time. Even if I thought I was good a year ago, looking back now, I'm way better now. I'm way better at speaking about what I'm going through and actually translating it in a way to where it's inviting people into my world instead of just blurting information at people. Like, yo, I'm sad right now. Yo, I'm happy. I just bought a Gucci bag. Although he may have been a frequent liar, his delivery showed a clear awareness of his exaggeration, making it difficult for many people to become upset about it. While other rappers of his era have plummeted out of the world's view, Tekka made a strong comeback, and a lot of that comes down to how he's emphasized growth. Can't be on the same shit that I've been on since a young kid. Like, so definitely, definitely expect, expect some, some growth on there. Definitely, definitely expect, expect some more talking about the topic, not talking around the topic. Like, a lot of confidence on that for sure. Judging by the fact that he still amassed over 1 billion streams in 2023 alone, Tekka is seemingly going nowhere and is content with his position in the game. He's no longer fixated on spinning the block, toting glocks in his music videos, or that he wants people to test his gangster like many other rappers we discussed recently. Instead, he explicitly states that his sole focus is on work. While other rappers boast about being outside, Tekka is content indoor. In fact, his childhood stardom has accelerated his maturity beyond his years. Every time I begin to invite it outside, like, party or something like that. I'm like, bro, I'm gonna be blessed when I'm 35 and chilling on my yacht, just thinking about all the time I sacrificed when I was 20. I don't really care to be partying with no one. I don't like them anyway. I've been introduced to a lot of shit that a lot of people are excited by in their 30s when I was a young teen. So right now I look at all that shit and I'm like, bro, that's boring. I don't want to go to the club and spend a bunch of money on bottles. That's boring. Let's do some other shit. Let's make some money. Are you trying to spend money? With the tech album outselling projects from huge rappers like Quavo and Lil Yachty with 41,000 units, the 21-year-old has proven that gaining success beyond your wildest dreams at a young age isn't a death sentence. And even today, he's still openly capping in his raps. I don't think nobody know nobody with 500 pounds. If you got 500 pounds, I don't know if I trust you. That's a lot of stuff, 500 rounds. I don't know if I trust you either. Against all odds, Tekka hasn't just survived, but he's thrived to the point that young listeners today actually see him as an inspiration because of his maturity and how he's outlasted other rappers in his position. I just love watching Tekka interviews and the way he expresses himself. I learned a lot from him. Tekka seems so comfortable as he's grown as an artist, happy for him and loved the album. Thrown into the spotlight at the age of 16, Tekka had to grow up fast. So it's not surprising that he ventured down a risky path, one that he might have not escaped unscathed in earlier generations. But whether you love him or hate him, Tekka is ultimately past caring what people think. And through that kind of self-belief, there is the freedom to do anything. It's okay for people to not understand who I am and not care to understand who I am at that. Everybody don't like chicken. Everybody don't like bacon, egg, and cheese. Everybody don't like what you like. And I also understand that about myself too. And even if I try to explain myself to the world, there's it gonna be someone like, I don't care. If you understand me, it is what it is and that's that. Like if somebody says I'm five foot two on Twitter or something, I'm not gonna be like, and the reply's like, bro, here's my ID. I'm not gonna care, I'm gonna scroll past and like go order some food. <laughs>
Okay. Done making apologies or trying to prove himself to anyone, Tekka's career prospects are looking incredibly healthy. So whether you want him to win or you'd rather that the years he spent capping came back to haunt him, it looks like he's not disappearing anytime soon.